G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video I'm going to be installing Pop! OS to my Intel NUC Skull Canyon, which is my main production machine. Let's get on with the install. So we'll uh, click on here, install Pop! OS English. Now it does ask you these questions when you start, as you can see it's ticked. Um, it asks you English and this one here, upon login, it will ask you for these two things here and then and then it gives you the option to try demo mode English Australian select and there it is there try demo mode which is what I'm in so you can do a clean install but what I'm going to do is a custom advanced install this is a very beautiful installer and very simple and I really like um, the way they've got this laid out. So I've got a NVMe one terabyte disk there, which is my data drive. This one here um, doesn't tell you the name of the disk. This one here is my Samsung SSD 960 Evo 256 250 gigabyte drive. Now that's the one that has my um, operating system on it always. So you can uh, you've got help with dual booting. You've got a question mark there. That's interesting. So help with dual booting with Windows. So it gives you some really good information for helping with dual booting. That's really nice. Uh, at the end of the day, all you need to make sure is you've got two separate EFI partitions, one for Linux, one for Windows. You shouldn't have any issues. You can choose to modify your partitions and that'll open up a Gparted. That's chosen my one terabyte and then I've got the 250 gig there. Everything there is what I need. That's what um, the script that I used from Esnix used and I did uh, change it so it gave me the rest as root rather than a separate home. So that worked out very well. So as you can see here, you can click on this thing here, use partition. I'm gonna click away there. Or you can click on this bar here, same thing. So it's the same thing here. So on here you've got your FAT32, which is the yellow bit here, which is my boot partition. I can click here, or I can click here. They're really nice. And the same here, same here. So this is what we're going to do. Same here and same there. So what I want to do is I, I don't want to touch this. This is my data drive. I've just been um, doing a few backups on this, um, making sure that I've got most things backed up on there. Uh, sometimes it is a bit hard to keep track when you're doing it manually, so I may have to work on that. So what I'm going to do is click on this and say use the partition, um, use as boot EFI. Um, I don't know if I need to format it. it Maybe worthwhile formatting, clean it up a bit so there's nothing left there and it gives you a little tick that you're that you've done something with that you could probably uncheck that <clears throat> so it's not going to be used but I'm going to use this partition boot EFI I will format it and then we're going to the red bit here that's use partition as swap and that's ticked that off as well and let's use this partition here as format that. It's going to be used as root. And we've got other options here. Boot, custom, swap. File system is default ext4. And you've got some other options there as well. And it puts the tick there. It's um, check that off as well. How simple is that installer? I just find that installer really, really nice. So it gives you a rundown at the bottom here on what to do. Select which partitions to use across all drives. Selecting format will erase all data on the selected partition. You must at least select a root partition plus a boot EFI partition. That is at least 500 megabytes. So mine, as you can see, is 536. It probably was originally made 512, I think. It is also recommended to select a swap partition. So I'm done here. I'm going to erase and install. And off we go. 
Okay, so that's the end of the install. I think that didn't even take one minute. <laughs> so this is uh, an NVMe, so I'm on USB 3 as well, so everything's pretty quick on this. Now, what do we do here? After restarting, you can set up a new user or you can shut down now and set up a new user later. I need to save my video. There's two reasons I'm doing this install, and first reason is for your entertainment. <laughs> And the second reason is it just gives me a time frame as to when I install Pop! OS. Just in case I get those uh, withdrawal symptoms and I have to install something else. <laughs> but hopefully I, I can stay on this until the next main Pop! OS maybe. We'll see how we go. So um, to finish off the rest of this I may have to install this on VirtualBox which I'll have to do once I've set it up in Pop! OS. And then I can show you how to finish off the install because I can't I cannot record that I can only do that on uh, on a virtual machine okay so we are in VirtualBox we are going to check out the first boot of Pop! OS so this is what you see after you've installed And we get a pop welcome. And it runs through the different languages. That's pretty nice touch. Let's go next. And whatever we set up, which is what I did, was English Australian. Um, that is uh, what comes up as default with the little tick there, as you can see. And you've got, you know, all the others you can scroll through if you want to select your language, but mine is correct. And that is correct from the original install. You've got location services there. Um, I'll just leave that as it is. Then you've got your time zone, which has picked up where I am, Australia, Perth. Then you can connect your online accounts if you wish to do so. I will skip that for now. Then you put your name, your full name. And then the username. And as it says down the bottom there, this will be used to name your home folder and can't be changed. So I like to have mine as Colin, so we'll do that. Got the old CB up there. And we click Next. Set our password. And that's my password done and next. And we are all done. Pop! OS is ready to be used. We hope that you love it. Start using Pop! OS. And there we go. So just in case you want to see the login screen while we're on VirtualBox, let's just do a quick log out. Let's log out. And that is the login screen now have some options here for the login screen can choose to power off from here or suspend and you've also got a calendar there as well it's handy just uh, click on there or press enter same thing then you get um, the login box there put your password press enter and if you if we do that again and have a quick look at this box here um, we got the little uh, seeing eye here that um, allows you to see whether you've typed your password correctly I can see text <laughs> and then you can hide it again just in case things aren't working right for you you can check your um, that you've done your password correctly or not so that is Pop! OS after the original install and the post-install setup for Pop! OS. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.